The first Gabriel Noid game came out in 1993 and is definitely one of the best adventure games I've ever played. One of the best on all possible levels, graphics, music, voiceover and most importantly, story. So when the second part was announced, I was dead chuffed, but for some reason I've never played the game until recently. The Gabriel Knight 2 The Beast Within was made in 1995 by Sierra Online. The company was founded in 1979 by Ken and Roberta Williams. They've created some of the absolute gems, such as the King's Quest series or Space Quest series, Phantasmagoria or Area series. Just a quick fun fact, Ken and Roberta Williams got married in 1972 and after more than half a century they are still married today. Unfortunately, Sierra was acquired in 1996 by some shit conglomerate and two years later Ken, Roberta Williams and lots of original employees left the company, as it pretty much always happens after takeovers. Sierra then stopped developing games and served only as a sort of publisher. Then it was acquired again by some racist shit conglomerate and finally by Activision, which pretty much killed Sierra and in 2008 they were finally put out of their misery. It's the same story over and over again. Speaking of a story, for me personally, it's the most important aspect of any adventure game, but before I get to the story, let me first cover the game's other aspects. As it was quite popular at the time, the entire game is a full motion video with real places and actors. The game kicks off with an intro as pretty much every game from 90s. Now when I think about it, every game ever. And you can see right off the bat, it's bloody horrible. I tried messing about with the videos to find out some technical specs. I found out the videos can be played using the VLC, however, it looks like this. Then I tried converting the file with the FFmpeg and it ended up perfectly fine. Well, fine. Fine within the bounds of possibility. The resolution of the videos is quite low, specifically 308 by 167 and to add insult to injury 10 frames per second is not exactly stellar frame rate. probably due to hardware limitations of the time, maybe they feared their current hardware wouldn't be fast enough to handle more. With such a low resolution comes a low color palette and the pixels are just jumping about the screen, it's not a very nice sight. And if that's not enough, we've got this very nice screen tearing. As you can see the videos are quite bad as they are, but Sarah had decided they can make the videos even worse, so they used interlacing inside the game, marvelous, now they are basically unwatchable. Fortunately there's an unofficial patch that de interlaces the videos back to normal, which makes them at least watchable. The game fits to 6 CDs and these are the movie files. All the movies from all the CDs take up 3 gigabytes of space, given the time of the release it's an insane amount of data. Digitization technology was in its cradle as well as compression techniques. There's over 7 hours of footage in the game. The in-game graphics is, is not really graphics, the entire world is made of digitized images and that goes for the characters as well. Unlike the videos, the game resolution is 640x480, so it looks fine. To be honest, I don't really mind it's not a hand-drawn graphics as it was in the sense of the fathers, even though it looked way better. This has certainly some appeal to it. It's a classic point-and-click adventure game, you have to pick up some stuff, use it on other stuff to get yet another stuff, to use this stuff on some other stuff, talk to people and figure out what to do to finish the game while enjoying the story. Nothing unusual about the rug. Hello, someone's been tromping around barefoot in the mud. Even though it's a classic point and click adventure game, it's more focused on storytelling than your average adventure game, that's why there's so much footage. You'll engage in lots of dialogues and conversations. Well, engage a lot is a bit of an overstatement. Most of the game is actually video, so you just run the video by clicking on something. This little number here shows your progress. You get points for completing single tasks like picking up an item, properly using an item, or talking to people and gathering new information. It was quite popular with early adventure games, I don't see any appeal to it but it doesn't hurt being there. 
The music is outstanding. It was again composed by Robert Holmes, at least the main themes and opera sequences. The rest was composed by Jay Usher. I can't say anything bad about any track at all, pretty much all of them perfectly fit into every single location. Engelhardt and the Blacksmith There must be a story behind these wolf paintings, but what story? What I can say something bad about though, is the sound quality at some locations. Most of the time the quality is fine, specifically 16-bit 22 kilohertz, but at some locations it was terribly recorded. Supposedly every scene was shot in one or two takes, which then leaves little margin for error. Engelhardt, Hort, Hildegunde. Engelhardt and the Blacksmith. You play as Gabriel, of course, but for about half of the game, you play as his assistant Grace. While I don't mind playing for two characters, I don't fancy how these two characters are portrayed here. I fancied Gabriel in the sense of the father's much better. He was confident, snarky, full of sarcastic remarks, but smart and even sort of brave. Also, he had his way with women. I can't help noticing that you're in incredible shape, Miss Kitty. Your legs are so... Strong. Do you work out at one of the clubs by the lake? Well, detective, I do enjoy physical activity. Oh, me too. Actually, I was referring to swimming and modern dance. I can't say I do much exercising at the lake, though. Oh, well, it was worth asking. He is insecure, cowardly, almost diffident. He always looks uneasy and intimidated. In other words, he's sort of Pussy. Grace always kept her cool. She had to deal with Gabriel's snarkiness pretty much all the time. They were always teasing each other, and she usually came up with a witty comeback or some way to put Gabriel in his place in a sort of playful way. How come we haven't gone out yet? I'm still waiting around for that phlebotomy. As soon as I get it, I'll let you know. But here, he is jealous, spiteful, always losing the plot or throwing a wobbly, well, not always, but too often for me taste, and the chemistry between Gabe and Grace is gone. They are basically different characters with the same names. The script was written, again, by Jane Jensen, as well as the overall game design. At the end of the first game, you found out Gabriel is a descendant of some sort of German monster hunters, and that he's inherited a castle in Germany. During the intro, you'll find out Gabriel moved to a small German town, Rittersberg, and his newly inherited castle, Schloss Ritter. Schloss means castle in German. Rittersberg is a made-up town, and the actual filming took place in a town called Rottenberg, and the same goes for Ritter Castle, which was filmed in Berg Rabenstein. Gabriel is called Schattenjäger now, it means shadow hunter in German, some sort of monster hunter according to locals. In the intro, people from Rittersburg told Gabriel about a wolf attack on a local girl. They're convinced it wasn't an ordinary wolf but a werewolf that did it, and it's exactly a job for a new Schattenjäger. I'm not really sure what you want me to do. The killer is not wolf, it is werewolf. You must hunt it down and kill it. Werewolf? What makes you think it's a werewolf? Gabriel seems to be a bit surprised and annoyed they came to him, even though he well knows he is what he is, but he agrees he will look into it and the next day morning, Gabriel starts the investigation. He finds some article in a newspaper about wolf killings and about a zoo some wolves escaped from. Gabe follows his first clue to the Munich Zoo, where he finds out a couple of wolves have really escaped, which supports the version the girl was really attacked by an ordinary wolf. But was she really? The entire plot revolves around German folklore and history, both of which were masterfully integrated into the story. The game may be too boring and sort of far too educational for somebody. During the game, you have to read through tons of historical documents, visit museums, lots of places around Bavaria such as Munich or famous Neuschweinstein Castle. 
all the locations you can see in the game were filmed in Germany. As you'll be traveling all around Bavaria, you'll learn something about actual historical figures like Wagner or Ludwig II, who were of course slowly altered to fit the narrative. At the beginning of the second chapter, Grace comes to Germany to help Gabe with investigation and the means you get to control Grace. While Gabriel is running about Rittersberg investigating, Grace is doing her usual research all over Bavaria. That involves visiting museums, sifting through piles of documents and lots of talking. The dialogues are sometimes a bit dodgy or cringy, but overall informative and most importantly fun. To wrap it up, we've got terrible actors, mediocre main characters, weird dialogues, shit quality videos and overall digitalization, combined with the marvelous story, excellent music and noise filming locations. All of that somehow makes the bad bits not that bad anymore. I'd even say it somehow perfectly fits together for some reason. And even though the bits of the game are rubbish on their own, they complete each other in the weirdest way possible and all of that makes one astonishing and fun game. Certainly not better than the Gabriel Knight Sins of the Fathers, but still astonishing. And they wrapped it up. If you'd like to play the game but have no time or whatever, you can go and watch my playthrough. It's off like watching an 8 hour film. And there's the video. Go watch the playthrough and leave a comment if you want. See you next time. Cheerio.